Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, we've got something really special because we just got the first AccuFab L4K from Shining 3D. Now, Shining 3D is a company we know better from 3D scanning. They make machines such as this beautiful UE7, which is a metrology handheld blue light laser scanner. That's what they're really, really good at. But now Shining 3D have said, okay, we've already got the whole scanning business and we're really good at that. What if we're also really good at 3D printing? So they developed the AccuFab L4K and we've got the first machine right here and we're gonna unpack this, see what's inside the packaging and then you know have a look at the machine itself. What does it look like? Uh, are there benefits or disadvantages that I can see right off the bat? And then of course in future videos we'll have uh, some looks at parts, maybe the first print experiences, uh, how to update firmware, etc, etc, etc. We'll see all about that later. For now, let's have a look at this packaging. I already cut the strip up top, the plastic, but I haven't opened it up yet, so this is pretty exciting. So on the top, we have a quality certification and a quick start guide. The quick start guide on the front, it even tells you how to unpack your machine, so that's nice. Then it has an at a glance overview, the first setup, and then a couple more information, informations about how to print. So I can show you this. So there's the un unpacking instructions. Uh, then on the inside, this is the at a glance of the printer a packing list, as well as the first setup. Then some stuff about calibration and the like, and then how to print at the very end. So I already like this quick start guide because um, it. You know, it has everything from how to unpack the machine, how to set it up, and how to actually print with it. It's got everything you would want to know. Got a power cable, European power plug. Well, I am in Europe. Um, and there are two screws and a little hex key. I'm not sure yet what these are good for, but I'm sure they're to replace something or, you know, do something with a printer. Now, let's get this styrofoam packaging out of the way. Get that one off the top. Now we can have a look inside and right off the bat I see that there's a big cardboard box, resin tank for the L4D or L4K, so that's nice. I assume it's just a replacement resin tank on the inside. Yes, that's exactly what it is, uh, including a VAT cover, so that's nice. I, I appreciate them sending a backup. A spare in case you damage yours. It obviously has an additional FAP film in it as well. So just in case something goes wrong. Nice. Bonus point. Going to put that aside. Then, of course, there's more styrofoam packaging inside that I'll just get rid of. This one and this one. And now there's just the printer left. So let me see whether I can get it out of here. Yep. There we go. Nice and careful. Try not to drop it. Unclip my watch. Let's put that back on. There. And now I can get rid of the entire rest of the packaging. There's nothing left inside aside from more styrofoam. Keep the original packaging in case you ever need to send it back. Okay. So lots of plastic around the outside. Let's open that up. Throw that away. There's like tape around the outside keeping it nice and tight so it can't come off by its own. So I'm going to cut that with my box cutter. There we go. Now I can get this off the printer as well. Let me lift this back onto the platform. Nice. Okay, so at first glance, it looks beautiful. It's got this high value type of look to it. This is, it's plastic, but it looks sort of like a dark brushed aluminum. The power plug, ethernet plug, USB plug, and on off switch are all on the right hand side of the printer. It's a bit weird. I mean, I get why the power 
switch and the USB plug are there, but I would have expected the power plug and ethernet plug to be on the back of the machine. There's absolutely nothing on the back, except as, aside from the labels, of course, you know, CE and all that. Nothing on the left side, aside from more air vents, and then of course the front. It has a nice large display and this ring around it. We'll see what that does. For now, let's open it up. Up, and there. And now we can take the styrofoam packaging out from inside. That's also described in the startup guide. It tells you to do this. Get that elastic cable off. More styrofoam packaging. And then there's a little accessory box in it. Nice. Get rid of the packing material. Let's see what's inside here before we keep going with the printer. So, first, got a little squeegee. This is something I like. Um, it's, you know, if you, whenever you want to clean out the resin vat and want to get rid of all that resin, the squeegee is really, really nice, and uh, between prints, if you still have enough resin in the tank, you can use this to stir the resin as well. Usually, many printers will come with something like this, out of plastic. Don't use this. This is bad. It'll scratch your FEP film. Use something like this. Buy a silicone squeegee off Amazon. They cost next to nothing. This one already comes with one. Big bonus point. Uh, you've got disposable gloves, in case you didn't already have any. These are little PET plastic cards. I'm not entirely sure what these are for, haven't used that before. Then there's a USB cable. It's nice that that's included. There's microfiber cloth, beautiful, perfect to clean the screen if any dust ever gets on it. That's all we have in the upper compartment, so let's get that down. We've got one Wow, this is, this is a solid one. So this is basically a uh, scraper with a fairly narrow edge. It's not as sharp as I would have liked it to be, but I'll, I'll just sharpen it a little more to really have a razor edge to get in between the print and the built platform. So that's nice, and it's a very solid one. I can really uh, have a lot of power with that. Ethernet cable, also nice that that's included. It's not too common. There is a toothbrush looking type of thing, although it does have plastic bristles instead of the whatever fiber you have on your regular toothbrush. So that's also nice for cleaning. Then there's another scraper with a wider edge. Also not as sharp as I would have liked it to be, but you know, I'll just sharpen it a little more. Make it really, really sharp so that I can easily get the prints off the plate and then a USB stick with, I assume, the software necessary for this printer. It is not a Cheetu Box printer or anything like this. You don't use Leechy, you don't use Cheetu Box. Instead, there is uh, Shining 3D's own slicing software to be used with this. So we'll have a look at that later. For now, let me pack the accessory box again. I'll leave the cables outside since I'll need those soon. I like this though. It's, it's like a starter kit. Everything you need is included and it's got this little handle here. You can take it wherever you go, I guess. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Okay, let's have a look at this printer. Instead of using the included power cable, I don't want to crawl behind the table. I've already got one set up right here, so I'm just going to grab that and plug it in and turn it on. Something I haven't mentioned yet, this cover, I really like it. Um, now, I don't know whether you've uh, used Creality printers before, they've got this hood that you need to lift up and put down next to the printer. Or you've got, I don't know, the Frozen Sonic 4K, for example. It has this lid that you open up and then put on top of the printer, basically. So each time you need almost double the height of the printer just above in order to open it up. With this one right here, all I need is a little space behind, and I'll usually have that anyway because it's, it's not that big of a machine. And then I can open up this cover with barely any additional room needed above. So that's nice. It's also got this real smooth feeling to it, which I really like. There's like rubber stops at the bottom and at the top so it never bangs against anything. Nice. This is all metal, feels good, feels you know very solid. The packaging said it was 25 kilograms and there's nothing in it beside the printer and the resin uh, reservoir, the spare one. Ooh, it beeped at me. 
So you can see what a solid machine it is. Sure, this down here is plastic, but everything from here on up seems to be metal. This black part is metal. Everything inside here is metal. Uh, the entire gray part up here is also made of metal. The guide rails are really, really solid. Uh, it's actually high wind guide rails, two linear ones inside there. So that looks very good. Um, there's a filter inside, of course. There's a little more styrofoam packaging. Let's get rid of that. And then I've got my resin vat. So already very nice. There is now a blue LED light as a circle. I assume that changes color as soon as we start printing or something. So it's cool. It's a nice, nice little extra, I guess you can say. Um, something else I quite like is this fastening system for the resin vat. You've got these clamps on the left and right. Um, when they're open, you can't close the cover. So you can't forget to lock your vat in place. If you do forget, it would lift up and probably damage your printer significantly. We've done that with another Creality that we have. Uh, I forgot to screw in the, the fixating screws. So I really like this setup. Um, then we can take the resin vat out of the printer. Also metal, very heavy. It's got a beautiful little spigot on the side that allows you to uh, pour the, um, uh, the surplus resin out of the reservoir, so I really appreciate that. It's very nicely done. It's got a minimum and a maximum fill line, so you know how much resin to put in there. Of course, there's plastic film protecting the FEP film during shipping. It's a very big reservoir, actually. Um, and it has little like knobs on the bottom. And then here, out of the metal plate, they've, they've milled little like uh, indentations, so it slots in there, so you can't mess up the placement of the reservoir. It just, it's really solid. And then you can clamp it back in place. Let's have a look at the built plate. So I already like the knob. It's got this little rubber grip thing around it. Nice. It just feels like a valuable printer. Everything about it feels valuable. And then uh, the built plate itself already comes a little roughed up. So your prints stick nicely to the surface. And there's uh, like a groove on top That'll make sure you can only insert it into the printer one way, so you always put it in the right way around. Also nice. Um, so, so far, very impressed with the, with the build quality. It's just, yeah, it it's, looks really nice. Now on the display at the top left, we have a temperature and a humidity gauge. Um, inside the printer, there's a heater and a cooling system, so I assume it can just, you know, keep the temperature at a perfect level for the resin that's inside at all times. Um, once you've connected it to Wi-Fi, uh, it'll automatically be able to, to update its firmware over the internet. Also something I like, updating firmware, flashing firmware onto other 3D printers can sometimes be really messy, or uh, one printer requires, you know, plug in the USB stick, turn it off and on again. Uh, the next printer has a different procedure. On this one, it's just click the update button on the screen once you're connected to the Wi-Fi. So I'll Try that later. Looks really good. It also has a door sensor. So there's a little icon that pops up as soon as I open the door. I've noticed that. So that's cool. I assume that um, for some companies, it may be important that the machine automatically stops printing as soon as the hood is opened. You know, workplace safety, all that. And I assume that's what this is for. You can probably set up the machine in a way that it stops printing as soon as the hood is opened will likely cause damage to your print or make it not look as nice, but safety first. Uh, it has a sort of counter. It has a material setting that I can change. So depending on what kind of a material I have, I assume it accepts some sort of settings. Um, speaking of resin, with a printer, we got a one kilogram bottle of standard yellow, whatever that may mean. Uh, so this is what we'll probably start printing with, standard yellow. Sounds good to me. And yeah, I mean, the rest of the display is really simple. There's a print button that presumably lets you scroll through G-codes. There's nothing plugged in right now, neither a USB cable nor a USB, um, USB stick. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, so nothing there right now. There's a settings menu that lets you change software settings including an active hood sensor when printing. That's what I just mentioned about opening the, the cover. Um, you can have mechanics. Right, that's how you manually move the built plate. Uh, that makes sense. Projector settings. 
There's a button to uh, cure resin tank bottom resin, you know, cleaning. Uh, that's nice. Projector switch, you can project grids, a black image, a white image, and a light intensity correction button. So there's a lot of fine tuning there, obviously a network settings button uh, to enable the Wi-Fi or the ethernet once you've got that plugged in and an about button that tells you the firmware, the serial number, all that kind of stuff. So display, by the way, really nice and responsive, even in some of the settings where it's like to, to drag it, very nice, feels good to use. And that's not something you always have with these sort of printers. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, I'm very impressed with this so far. The question is, how does it print? And we won't find out that today. I'll have to uh, actually go and run a couple of test prints with it, and that'll still take me a number of days, probably. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. That's all I have for just unpacking and putting this one on the table. I'll be very interested to have a look at the software because I've heard, well, number one, it's a dedicated slicing software for this printer, so I'm expecting a lot from it. Number two is I've heard that there's a sort of network system where you can remotely control the printers and send them the print jobs. And I'm curious to find out how much I can actually do using that software because as soon as you move to a production environment, being able to control multiple ones of these printers remotely, monitor print job status, I don't know, upload files to be printed on those printers from a remote computer, all of that could be really, really useful. So I'm looking forward to having a glance at that software. This already looks like a very valuable machine that feels good to use. Yeah, that's, that's all I've got to say so far. So thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you tune in for the next one as well. I hope we will have one soon with a couple of printed parts. So have a great day and I'll see you next time.